Oh, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. I know it's getting uh, late in the event here. I'm getting ready to wrap up, so I won't take too much of your time. Uh, but I wanted to go over kind of uh, so a couple of the slides I did on the expo floor yesterday. I think it's worth just showing uh, our ecosystem and how far we've come uh, in the networking group just in the last uh, three and a half, almost four years. So. As far as hardware design contributors, I know you can see this on the wiki, but you kind of put it in perspective in a picture. Um, we have a very healthy ecosystem um, and open networking. At the top, we have uh, the silicon providers who have all contributed uh, specifications and or designs to open compute. In the center, we have um, manufacturers of that technology who also have contributed their own designs, specifications, and uh, design files to open compute. And at the bottom, we have operators uh, that have de uh, contributed designs and or specifications. Facebook, SK Telecom through the uh, Telco Group, and AT&T, who's uh, contributed specifications through the Telco Group as well. So a very healthy ecosystem of hardware uh, design contributors. Uh, and this is continuing to grow. I would expect this to grow even more with the addition of uh, Marvell and some other people uh, that have joined OCP as of uh, recently as of this summit. So we're looking forward to that. As far as a software ecosystem, again, very healthy at the top. These are OCP components. We have uh, Open Network Linux, Flex Switch package from uh, uh, SnapRoute, which you're aware of, and Sonic. So those are all OCP uh, operating systems, the Linux distribution and operating systems at the top. Below that are uh, the other OCP components that are used. There's ONI, there's SAI, and the um, uh, optical management API. So you guys are probably familiar with those, but those are the components that are, are used uh, from OCP and open networking for software today. At the bottom of this slide are uh, either commercial or open source type offerings um, for open networking switches. So there's a lot of software uh, options out there, and this is just a snapshot. The most recent option, of course, was the announcement from Arista uh, yesterday that they were uh, going to start to disaggregate their EOS software and offer their, at least their BGP application in a uh, containerized format on top of Sonic, right? So that's kind of a, a big announcement, a, uh, you know, kind of a, a tier one-ish type incumbent announcing that they're going to start to play in the open networking space um, as far as riding on top of hardware. So I thought that was a, a worthy announcement yesterday. So a very healthy software ecosystem we have uh, going here. <clears throat> so some of our contributions that we've made this summit uh, for my company, Edgecore Networks, uh, this design contribution is based on Tomahawk 2 silicon. So this is a 64 port, 100 gig switch. So in the past we've done 32 port, 100 gig switches. Now we have 64 ports of 100 gig from a single piece of switching silicon. Uh, so this just shows you how much uh, not only open networking, but networking as a whole is advancing as far as, you know, speeds and feeds. This is very important for uh, data center operators as they can now increase the radix of their spines with 64 ports and a uh, single ASIC. Uh, very cost effective design we've done here is one single PCB board for all 64 ports, so 32 ports on the top side, um, connectors, and uh, 32 ports on the, on the bottom side. It uses the same CPU modules as all of our other OCP designs, so we have uh, various x86 CPU options, we have uh, high density ARM options and uh, PowerPC Core IQ options for CPUs. Um, this is, of course, uh, in uh, a beta type uh, uh, form now, and we'll be sampling this in the, in the next month or so coming up here, and we expect to, you know, this to be in volume production uh, depending on the silicon, and we're targeting you know, Q3, Q4 this, this year. So uh, quite a good advancement, I think, in 100 gigabit switching for OCP. Now we have 64 port, 100 gig designs. And as well, um, uh, another 64 port, uh, 100 gig design that was contributed to OCP, uh, just so we're all aware, was a barefoot design. Uh, so now we have two 64 port, 100 gig designs in OCP. So quite an advancement in the, uh, the 100 gig space. Uh, this time around, we also contributed um, a 25 gig top of rack switch to go along with the um, the 100 gig spine layer type switch. So this, again, is based on a Tomahawk ASIC from Broadcom, 48 ports of SFP28 downlinks to servers. Those can either be 25 gig or 10 gig with six QSFP28 uplinks. It can be 100 gig or 40 gig or any of the speeds QSFP28 support. 
Again, same design principles, uses the same CPU modules as all of our other OCP designs. Uh, so it's a common format, common uh, power supplies and fans. Uh, we route the extra 10 gig ports from the Tomahawk up to the CPU module for um, those types of uh, customers or software pa partners that want to do some kind of network function or exception-based packet processing. There's extra capacity of uh, 20 gigabits in addition to the standard PCIe that goes up to the CPU module. Okay, so our, our standard OCP design um, here as well. And we continue to push on uh, other areas of open networking um, in addition to just the data center. So uh, last year at Summit, we did the initial um, contribution of products uh, for campus, branch, and wireless. And last year was uh, three access points based on Broadcom and a PoE switch. This year we're contributing uh, two access points based on Qualcomm uh, silicon. So there's a two by two. Uh, Wi-Fi access point and a 4x4 uh, Wi-Fi access point. Both of these are, are Wave 2 multi-user, multi-MIMO uh, capable platforms. So again, we just continue to push uh, these, uh, these platforms into the CBW type environment, campus branch and wireless. So with that, there's, just to bring everybody up to speed, there's a healthy ecosystem of partners building in the CBW group, the campus branch and wireless. That's kind of a a subgroup under the networking group. I don't know if it's an official subgroup or how that works. It's an official subgroup, okay. And uh, there's a bunch of us that have calls uh, every few weeks, and uh, it's growing and growing. So here's the list of vendors that are currently uh, did a demonstration on Monday night at the Delta facility. And uh, so you can see there's some uh, fairly big names in here. AT&T was there, you know, Ubuntu was there, Mojo, Bennu, Edgecore, and Ajima. So a couple hardware vendors, two or three software providers as well. The demo looks something like this. It was uh, you know, two PoE switches that are uh, OCP accepted, all right, for, for campus environments. And off of those PoE switches were uh, OCP access points. And on those access points, the various software vendors ran their solutions for demonstrations. So we had you know, a demonstration from Bennu Network showing their solution and showing uh, what they call CBW Linux. It's an open WRT Linux-based platform that runs on any of these open Wi-Fi access platforms. So now we have a, a Linux distribution uh, that's standard that runs across all uh, Wi-Fi platforms. We had uh, Mojo Networks showing their solution running on top of uh, open network, plat open uh, Wi-Fi platforms. AT&T uh, did a mobility demonstration on top of Wi-Fi platforms, and we showed our Wi-Fi platforms doing uh, ONI uh, to be able to download different network operating systems onto the Wi-Fi uh, platform. So all these support uh, ONIs for, and for download of the various uh, images and network operating systems on the, the Wi-Fi platform. So, you know, this is starting to gain not only interest within the vendor community, we're starting to uh, take this out to the customers and we're getting some, you know, a lot of interest from customers. I would expect this to start to grow um, exponentially here as far as interest and participants in this group, much as the way the networking group did in the first couple of years. So I think this is very exciting. Uh, we see this being offered into campus uh, and branch enterprise environments through the carriers, through carriers offering managed services or managed service providers um, selling services to the enterprise and campus type environments will be the first adopters, I think, of this. But this is moving forward, and I think this is very, uh, very exciting stuff for open networking. Let's see if this, uh, can you advance me? Okay. Uh, kind of a cheesy triangle, sorry about this, I just threw this together real quick. So I wanted to kind of give some perspective on um, deployments. And unfortunately, I had a couple customers lined up that, you know, months ago were more than willing to stand up here and, with their company logo and talk about what they're doing. But as we got closer to the actual date, they, of course, got some cold feet and their executives and whatever else didn't want to officially stand up here and talk about it. But for the most part, us in this room, as far as vendors and also consumers of open networking equipment, were for the most part, the volume anyway, you know, the tier one uh, cloud operators, data center guys, right? Facebook, Google, you know, BAT over in, in, uh, in China, uh, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, all those are, are public about what they're doing uh, as far as open networking equipment. The next tier down, um, 
Financial services guys have been fairly public about what they're doing with uh, open networking equipment. But I wanted to kind of highlight two other use cases um, that are real and they're real deployments and POs have been written and they're underway that utilize network equipment. So we have a retail and a carrier customer. And again, unfortunately, I can't show their name. Uh, but the first one is a, a very large retail customer, probably the largest retail retailer in the world. They have brick and mortar stores as well as online ordering. So you can probably guess who that is. They're expanding their, um, their data centers because of their online uh, sales are picking up and they want to go with some new principles. So they're doing a total OCP deployment. So this is, you know, the standard leaf spine architecture is what they're deploying. This is what they've uh, purchased and what they're deploying. They're doing 100 gig OCP accepted spine switches. They're doing 25 gig OCP contributed top of rack switches. They're using, for the data center interconnect, they're using the QMX. Um, oh, can you go back, Scott? I'm sorry. They're using the QMX, uh, nope, back one more, uh, silicon switches for their data center interconnect, which are OCB contributed and accepted. And as far as software package, they're running Open Network Linux as the Linux distribution with SnapRoute's flex switch packages on top of that. So they have uh, bought and are installing a total OCP solution for their data centers going forward. So I think that's a very significant um, achievement in what we have done in this room as far as bringing all this together and seeing a real life deployment, a very large deployment of this actually uh, taking, taking shape. So I think that's very, uh, very interesting and a, uh, you know, a nod towards that, yes, this is real and it's not just the hyperscale guys are doing this, it's people actually deploying OCP software as well as OCP hardware. So I think this is, uh, unfortunately, they couldn't come and talk about it. Um, a carrier deployment, uh, this is, being in proof of concept and will be rolled into production uh, later this year. This is uh, the one of the largest cable operators in North America is in proof of concept with this. And this is more of a, uh, if you're familiar with Cord that was introduced by AT&T, Central Office re-architected as a data center. This is kind of the uh, blueprint of the, the network topology. Um, it's leaf and spine, it's access switches, it's OCP servers and storage, and it's open source um, software. So again, this is OCP servers, it's 100 gig OCP accepted spine switches, it's QMX um, access switches, so the, uh, the switches that we contributed last year based on, on Broadcom DNX silicon, that's what they're using in the, uh, as the access switches here. This, all the switches in this installation run Open Network Linux as the Linux distribution. On top of that, these switches run OpenFlow from um, Open Network Foundation. Um, and the overall architecture is a cord architecture from ON Labs using uh, ONOS as a controller. So this again is a total open networking solution. Some of the pieces aren't OCP specific that are from cord, but they're from the ONF. So again, we. A, a good um, solution here of how OCP hardware, some OCP software, with the addition of other open community um, things that are going on come together to provide a total open solution to customers. Okay, so that's, uh, that's ongoing as well. And that's really it. I don't want to take much time. Um, that's what, that, what we're doing. That's uh, some of the installations that are going on, an update on the CBW stuff, which I think is uh, very exciting. And, if you want, I can take some questions. Is there any questions? Um, so the question was in the uh, two use case deployments that are underway, is Wi-Fi a part of it? Unfortunately, it's not yet. Um, hopefully soon. I mean, some of those use cases would actually have Wi-Fi. Uh, those customers for either subscribers for the, uh, the, uh, the MSO or the, uh, the retail guy, you know, he would have very large enterprise networks and uh, in their brick and mortar retail stores, they certainly have a lot of Wi-Fi there that they offer to customers as they shop as well. So hopefully that will be the next phase. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, thank you, Jeff.